What's up, everybody? I'm going live with Mark Hyman here. We're going to talk about the Bulletproof Conference, about food, how to get good food, and what you actually want to be eating. Mark is a dear friend and just a great human being as well. Mark, I'm looking for you to join in about now. Uh, Josh, sorry, I'm not going to have you join in because I'm waiting for Mark to make the request. Hey, Isabella. Hey, Naslin, Ann, and Tom. Tom. Oh, Mark just texted me. He's fixing his internet. So I'm going to chat with you guys for a little while while he gets his internet up and running. The reason that I wanted Mark to come on is that, hey, Chris. Hey, all right, Y L I, Ely. Hopefully I said that right. Um, the reason I wanted Mark to come on is, well, Mark is one of the keynote speakers at the conference that's coming up on October 10th. So if you DM the word conference to me right now, I'll send you the links and all that stuff. I'd love to get you guys into the conference because it is going to be so much fun. This is like the most exciting conference that I've done in a long time, just the quality of guests and all that. And hey, Simon. And Mark is interesting because, you know, he's the director of functional medicine, the Cleveland Clinic. And you, see, you probably have seen his books around. He's been on the show a few times. But what I think you're going to find is that when he talks, he talks about the benefits of food, but he also talks about something else. He talks about where food comes from, something that's very dear to my heart. When I started this Bulletproof journey, really in my mid-20s, before I knew it was going to be called Bulletproof, but this whole, hey, I'm going to spend a lot of money uh, on fixing myself and then even more on, on hacking myself and upgrading myself. And what's going to happen there is I wasted a ton of money and I started blogging and writing books because I shouldn't have had to do all that stuff because the knowledge should have been out there and it wasn't. But I eventually said, you know what? I'm going to have to make food that's good to have a reliable source for it. So that's why I grow sheep and pigs and vegetables on a farm where we actually make the soil thicker. And after years of looking at this stuff, Hey, Rakesh from India, uh, thank you for dialing in. I guess it's evening time for you. Um, what, what you're going to find is that if you want to remove carbon from the air and you want food that you want to eat, you've got to, you absolutely have to sit down and say, what is the land like where this animal or this plant came from? And when you start doing that, you go, oh my goodness, we are completely destroying things. All right, here's Mark. I see him. And we're destroying things because we concentrate animals too much and uh, we aren't taking care of the soil. We're actually depleting the soil by growing the same things over and over. Hey, there he is, Mark Hyman himself. Hey, humans. How are y'all? Well, Mark, I was just starting to talk about why I'd invited you to speak at the, uh, at the conference coming up on the 10th because- I'm excited about it. Well, I mean, you, you're one of the few guys who's actually out there saying, you know what, it's not just about, you know, eat more vegetables. It's like, where do your vegetables come from? How do we fix our food policy? So I think you're, you're just, you're an incredibly interesting and, and you're a good friend. So, I mean, I know you well <laughs> outside of social media and all that, but you're, you're just, you're all over it with what you're doing these days right now. So can you share a little bit? about what you're planning to talk about at the conference. By the way, if you're just joining, DM the word conference to me. Just send me a private message and I will, uh, I'll give you the link right away. So, so Mark, what, what's, the, what's the deal? What are you gonna be well, talking my, about? My, my latest focus is, you know, always been on, on food and, and healing and functional medicine. And, you know, I, I think I, I joke, I, I think functional medicine is the, the actual original OG biohacking system. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, maybe and, before then was the yogis and, uh, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure, there was like the the uh, inner inner uh, astronauts uh, of Tibet that used to discover all these super healing systems that we have inside ourselves. Uh, but you know, I, what I what I really focus on is you know why are we all so sick and fat? You know, eighty eight percent of us are metabolically unhealthy. That means like almost nine out of ten Americans are not doing very great. And I think the reason is because of our food system and and because of the food quality. And the lack of food quality, and you know, Dave, you've always talked about food quality and how do we optimize performance by upgrading our, our biology in, in every bite. And so functional medicine is really what we're going to focus on as a 
sort of, yeah, exactly, a strategic way to upgrade your biology and, and literally hack into the systems that are driving most of the chronic disease. And, and most of it obviously is driven by food. And the second part of my talk is going to be a little bit also about how the food system is perpetuating this problem. You know, there was, there was a, a very um, a kind of um, unfortunate comment by uh, John Mackey, who I have great respect for, uh, which is essentially the reason people are overweight or obese is because they're ignorant or lazy. And, no, I was 300 I, pounds. It, that's not true. I worked my ass off and I was still fat. <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's it, it, there's some level of ignorance, but it's not it's not their their ignorance. It's it's because of laziness or lack of interest. It's because we have a toxic food system that's perpetuated by an agricultural system and a food production system and a food distribution system that that is only plying toxic foods that harm the planet and harm ourselves. And so the focus is going to be how do we regenerate uh, our own well-being, our own health, right? And, and how do we create regenerative health care and how do we create regenerative agriculture as a way to actually grow better food? And you were just talking about, you know, I was listening in on you and you were talking about how you're, you know, on your farm, you're actually growing food using, you know, really regenerative methods and the quality of the food is so much better. And, and what we learned, you know, is, is that the soil is the biggest reason for nutrient quality of the food. And if you have crappy soil, you're going to have crappy food. In fact, even today, your broccoli or your vegetables are 50% less nutritious than they were 50 years ago. Yes. Even, even if you're eating good vegetables, because the quality of the soil is so damaged by the agricultural chemicals, pesticides, fertilizers, the, the, the herbicides that are damaging the microbiome uh -oh. of the soil, just like we damage our own microbiome through the incredible amounts of junk food we eat and the antibiotics and all the chemicals in our food. So we really have to learn how to regenerate the earth and regenerate human health. And they're totally connected. They're, they're one and the same. So Mark, I've been watching the comments as you're sharing this. And we've got Sri Lanka, Peru, Ecuador. Uh, I think I saw Brazil, Argentina, uh, people all over the planet are listening to what we're saying here. And it's something that some places have a lot better soil because they haven't made the mistakes that we've made in the U.S. for as long as we have since really about 1940. Uh, we've been destroying our soil at a record rate. So one of the things that I'm pretty excited about, when I did conferences in person, only a few people could come in. Oh, there's Bahrain on there. Yeah. Uh, there's Canada. I'm in Canada too. But like, y you couldn't actually bring people together. But by going all digital for this conference, um, I'm looking forward to people from all over the planet hearing your talk at the conference where we go into more detail. There's Kuwait, Bolivia. Like, this is a global Indonesia. It's a global movement where we're all fixing our soil. And the simplest thing that you're the first guy to write a big book about this that was like, this is the thing yeah. about, about food is don't buy industrial meat, don't buy Monsanto laced food. And when you do that, the people who make it have to stop and they can't be mean to animals and they can't destroy our watersheds and all those things. And it's up to us. All we have to do is, is vote with our dollars. And then what do you say, Mark, when people say, but it's too expensive? Well, I, th I think here's here's the problem. Um, it's a hierarchy of needs, right? And I think you know I work with people from all different socioeconomic backgrounds, and and you know one of the things that I hear it's elitist to eat good food. It's expensive. It's not accessible to everybody. And I, I think there's a lot to be gained from that perspective by the food industry. <laughs> uh, yeah. And by the government who's in cahoots with the food industry that essentially propagates the myth that it's expensive, difficult, time-consuming to eat good food. And it really isn't. Yes, if you want to buy a $70 grass-fed ribeye steak, yeah, from a regenerative farm, it could be expensive. But the fact is, we have to start with just real food. The biggest change that people will see is swapping out industrial food for just real food. And I'm on the board of the environmental working group called Good Food on a Tight Budget, which is how to eat food that's good for you, good for the planet, and good for your wallet. And, and I, I gave this guide to a, to a working family, and sorry, a non-working family in South Carolina as part of the movie Fed Up. They were on disability and food stamps. They, they had $1,000 a month for a family of five for food. They lived in a trailer. The father was severely obese on dialysis at 42 from kidney failure from diabetes, adult onset diabetes. The mother was well over 250 pounds. Uh, and... And his son was, was almost diabetic at 16. 
and they only ate industrial food. They were trying to do the right thing. They were trying to lose weight. And so why do you want to get healthy? Why do you want to be part of the movement? They started crying. And the reason was because their father was going to die if he couldn't get a new kidney. And he couldn't get a new kidney unless he lost 45 pounds. And they were just trying to eat the low fat this and the diet that and the Cool Whip, which had no trans fats. And the this. it was just, it was terrifying. And they never cooked a meal in their life. And they lived in one of the worst food deserts in America. And I gave them a simple um, exercise. I didn't, I didn't give them a lecture on what to eat or this or that. I said, let's go get some real foods. We got some turkey chili ingredients, some salad ingredients from real lettuce, not iceberg lettuce, some olive oil and vinegar dressing, not the store-bought stuff full of sugar and refined oils. Uh, we made, made some roasted sweet potatoes, some stir-fried asparagus. They never had a stir-fried vegetable in their life. They never cooked in their life. And we made this delicious meal, and they ate it, and they loved it. And they're like, this is amazing. We didn't know it would taste so good. And, and so they, they decided to, to do it. I said, here's this guide. Here's my cookbook. You can do this. And remember, in, in, in a very limited budget, with no previous skills, but basically given a little bit of knowledge, and a little guide on what to eat. So what are the cheapest vegetables, the cheapest meats, the cheapest nuts, the cheapest beans and grains? How do you eat real food for less? They were able to lose uh, 200, uh, 200 pounds in the first year as a family. Uh, the father was able to lose the weight and get a new kidney. The son uh, lost 50 pounds, but then gained it all back because he went to work at Bojangles because that's the only place to go get a job in the South, was fast food restaurants. He said to me, it's like putting an alcoholic to work in a bar. <laughs> and, and and then he figured it out and he lost 138 pounds his family never got to college he then asked me to write a letter of recommendation from for medical school he's now going to be a doctor he's in medical school wow and so so i you know to those people who say it's not possible it's not it's not accessible it's, not, it's too expensive the answer is it, it can be done and you need to be smart about it you know what you do but but you know you can for example if you if you look at online and direct to direct from farmers a mariposa ranch which is in california is a regenerative ranch where you can buy a cow and maybe share it with a bunch of friends and then chop it up and put it in your freezer for eight dollars a pound yeah and that's less per serving than a mcdonald's hamburger see that that's the thing and when you do that the distributor doesn't make money the grocery store make money because the money goes either by lowering the price for you or it goes into the pockets of the farmer 90 percent of small farmers actually have day jobs and i can tell you because i live on a farm and thank god we have a farm manager who's here we're almost able to pay for his services because we feed our local community with pigs and sheep and vegetables and i will tell you if i had to do that with my wife lana and our two kids and i had to work my CEO of Bullet, well, I'm chairman of Bulletproof, but CEO of several other companies, I couldn't do it. Like literally, I would never sleep. So if you pay farmers more by buying directly from them, you save so much money. That's how we save our soil. Small farms speckled around equals thick top soil equals better water management, better everything. We can't have centralized industrial animals anymore. It's just no, not sustainable. No, we can't. But you know, the truth is we, we can scale this and, and even can be regenerative like Gabe Brown's farm is fibers, but he uh -oh. produces some tops he use pesticides he doesn't use fertilizer he doesn't use herbicides he produces higher quality food that's far more nutrient dense produces far more food on the same acreage as his neighbor and makes 20 times the amount of money as his neighbor <laughs> all while making his farm resistant to droughts and floods and harsh weather and that's because we create a resilient ecosystem on the farm and it can be done on small farms and larger farms but, it, but we can't continue what we're doing it's, it's destructive it's extractive and it's not sustainable and, it, and it's actually very scalable what i'm talking about and it's, it's yeah. very profitable to these farmers and we just have to unhook from it and so what individuals can do and i'm going to talk about the only way you can do to re rejuvenate yourself what you can do to uh, actually upgrade your biology and practice what I call immuno rejuvenation, which is more important than ever in this time of COVID because our immune systems are all at risk because of this virus. How do you actually rejuvenate your immune system through food and, and all the things you talked about, Dave, to upgrade your biology? But but also, how do you how do you start to make choices with your wallet, with your voice, with your vote uh, and your fork to drive the food system to the changes we need? So maybe you start a compost pile, maybe you start to buy from more local CSA, or community support agriculture, or farmers markets. Maybe you, you find a regenerative farm and figure out how to get a cow with your friends. You make these small changes and they start to ripple through the whole society. So, so it's, not, it's not something that 
that is going to happen by itself. We all are going to have to do something. But it, but it matters, you know, voting on, I mean, tonight is a presidential debate. I can guarantee you the most important issue facing us today is not COVID-19. It's not, it's, it's not climate change. Uh, it's actually food. Because food connects to all of those things. The reason we see 6 million people and probably many more and 200,000 200, deaths in America is because we're all so sick and fat and we're pre-inflamed and, and COVID is hitting us hard because we're unhealthy. So, you know, because with the climate change is happening because of our food system. So you have to go upstream to deal with the cause. So, Mark, does the thought ever occur to you when you see someone who's clearly metabolically in bad shape like I used to be? pulling their homemade mask aside to eat something with full of bad fats and sugar. It, like, it, it seems like the order of operations is broken. What, what runs through your head when you see that? And, and do you feel like they're putting you in danger by eating bad food? No, I have tremendous compassion because I just, I do I just, too. <laughs> I just know how, um, you know how much the food industry has deliberately, methodically, and systematically subverted our biology through creating addictive foods that hijack our brain chemistry, yes. our metabolism, our taste buds, and and drive behavior that is we think is will based on willpower, but it's not. You, you know, you need to use science, no. not willpower, to fix this. And you, know, you had tremendous willpower, and you couldn't fix your fatness because you were given yeah. the wrong information, and you were thought you were supposed to eat less and exercise more. It just doesn't work that way. And when your metabolism is broken, you your willpower goes down because your metabolism is what makes energy. So you have less energy, you have less willpower. And then, you know, you're going to lose to the cheesecake every time. And that's just how it is. Uh, yeah. And if, man, I would have felt a lot less guilty when I was fat for that. So I'm glad you said that. I'm also, I mean, when I see, like, when I see mask shaming where someone's driving in the car without a mask on and people have pointed them, I'm like, wait a minute here. Like, let's look at our priorities for risk. Stop eating bad fats and processed food, and oh, you no. will be less likely to spread like anything anyone else so we, we've got to get that message out there eating I, equals immunity i think that's really important i think my mask just flew away too because i'm sitting outside i should be having to get my mask it's windy <laughs> <laughs> you'll survive um, now guys if you're enjoying this you're gonna hear a lot more from mark and me one day of amazing content and a huge immersive experience we're doing online at the biohacking conference just dm direct message or private message the word conference to me and i'll send you the link right now it's very very affordable it's meant so everyone on the planet can attend this from wherever you are and you'll be able to form a community with other people you'll hear from dr mark you'll hear from maria shriver and it's all about resilience and how to handle things when the fit hits the shan uh, which is kind of 2020 in a nutshell so listen to Mark, listen to me. I am really excited to bring this to you. Mark is a dear friend and one of the finest human beings I know, and he only looks a little bit like my brother. So th thank you, Mark, for speaking you know, at this conference. My, my, my favorite part of this was what Gina Adventure said. She says, two young looking men. <laughs> exactly. Like, well, I am 60 years old, so I'm not so young, but I'm working on it. <laughs> You're doing well. I'm only 87, but my anti-aging program is pretty, pretty aggressive, so. But my, my telomeres are 39. Uh, are they? So, That's yeah. cool. So I'm, I'm 39. I'm 60 going on 39. Wow. Well, I'm 48. And uh, my telomeres, I haven't measured them. Uh, the blood ones seem to be all over the place. But my blood vessel flexibility, 24. And my neurological response time, 20. And I'm like, right. I think some of the stuff that we're doing, Mark, I think it works. And, and you can it see it. And if you guys are getting nutrition advice from a physician, who isn't applying the advice to themselves and they look at you and they say, oh, my advice works, I just don't follow it. That's because you can't follow it. It's not that they didn't want to, it's that the advice had failure built in. And so it's okay to ask and just say, hey, you know, not everyone's healthy all the time, but hey doctor, you know, what's going on? You know, if I go down this path, what am I gonna look like? And if the advice rings true and you see the passion and you see the conviction and you see the results, and you see the data, then do what works. And if you need to eat more plants, you probably do. And if you need to eat less industrial meat or none at all, you probably do. But the effects aren't just on you. And it's not a selfish thing. If you care about the air you breathe, you don't eat that stuff. But you're not going to see it right now. You're going to see it way down the road. And you can economize 
Grass-fed butter is three bucks for a pound. And if you shop around and you cook your own food, you will save money off fast food, and it is possible on any budget. So thank you, Mark. Um, thanks for supporting the conference. All right, thank thank you, you for writing the work, writing the books that you do, the work you're doing. You're an amazing human being. Guys, follow Mark if you're not, and DM conference to me and see us both there. Yes, can't wait to see you guys there. All right. Thanks, Mark. I'm going to probably answer a few more questions for people, but we're getting some bandwidth issues from um, the restaurant where you are. I'm not going to ask which restaurant it is. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, man. Okay. Bye, buddy. All right, guys. I'll answer a couple more questions for you if you want. Looks like he was having some problems uh, with his bandwidth towards the end there. All right. Thanks for all the love just from all over the world. I love seeing where all you guys are from. It's, it's fantastic. Do you have any specific questions about what you, you know, what, what would be uh, possible on a budget or anything about biohacking? Because we're talking about the biohacking conference. Uh, Patricia, you've got to send me a private message. If you put conference in the threads, I can't post links in the threads. Instagram will let me. So when you send me a direct private message, um, just you can do it right here on the screen. And uh, I think it's on the top left, probably, wherever it is. Just send the word conference to me, and then I'm allowed to send you a link privately, but I can't post it publicly. And if you're really lazy, go to biohackingconference.com. Um, all right, let's see. Hula Liebecki says, kidney stone prevention. And, you know, one of the big things causing kidney stones right now is raw spinach and kale. Uh, those things create oxalic acid. I've been warning about this for a long time. You got uh, You got to watch about that. Uh, I saw a question from Brazil. Yeah, the conference is online and it's an immersive experience and it's very affordable. So uh, I'd love to see you there. It's designed so people all over the world can come to be there. All right. People are saying, um, what's, uh, let's see, can I talk about fat intake? And people are scared to do this. This is from Steve Fit Health. So Steve, different kinds of fat do different things. And in my last book on aging uh, called Superhuman, I went into what happens when you eat fat, where does it go? And it turns out it goes to different parts of the body in different ways. So when you eat those plant oils that are supposed to be healthy in the US but are actually unhealthy, they unfairly accumulate in your white fat cells and create inflammation all over the place. And you're like, whoa, wait, really? And they go differently into the brain versus the heart cells versus the blood cells and all that. And I go through the math, where does it go? Bottom line is, half the fat in your body, around 45%, is saturated fat by design. The only kind of fat you can manufacture from scratch is a saturated fat. No one knows that. So saturated fats are not the enemy. You need those. Those are stable building blocks for cells. And around those, you need some monounsaturated fats and a very small amount of the omega-6 inflammatory fats. So it's not that fat's good or bad. It's that the right fats that are undamaged are good and the wrong fats, especially when they're damaged, are absolutely destructive of your metabolism. And that's really important to understand. Hey, Gina, Bulletproof for Life, me too. All right, uh, let's see. See me manage, how can you improve your muscles health by diet? Well, what you can do to get your muscles, your muscles healthier is eat more protein, which is important. And if you're looking to do it on a budget, eggs work unless you're allergic to them. And collagen protein is a really good thing to do. And the reason you want to do that is that the fascia that surrounds your muscle is there. And so what you do is you, once every three days, lift something really heavy for not too long. And when you do that, you'll, be, you'll do really well. I saw a question um, from, um, let's see, De Trippi, I love the name, collagen, best form to take. Well, Bulletproof made collagen a, uh, a thing. You know, it, it became a supplement category uh, because I popularized it and there's many companies that make it now. The Bulletproof Collagen Peptides that we make are the ones I use that come from grass-fed beef. Um, the conference is October 10th. And if you DM the word conference to me, you'll get everything you need. All right, quest to bring you hope. What do I think about LL37 peptide for SIBO? Uh, that's a complex question. And I wrote about peptides in Superhuman. So for LL37, it's not usually used for small intestine bacteria overgrowth. It's normally used for like Lyme disease and chronic inflammation stuff. BPC157 is the peptide to look at for SIBO. All right, I think I see a Norwegian flag there. And uh, we've got Lady of Latte, that's a cool name. Oh, right, Tulio, how much coffee can you drink per day? Hmm, well, it depends on whether you metabolize it quickly or normally or slowly. 
If it's slow, you're probably having a cup in the morning. If you're normal, you can have, well, the studies show up to five cups increases your longevity as long as you do it before 2 p.m., but that's a pretty heavy coffee load. So usually it's two, three cups. Best skin tightener, grass-fed collagen on a regular basis. Here's what no one talks about in the world of collagen is that there's a rate of refreshing different substances in your body. Fat refreshes 50% in two years. That's like the half-life. But then collagen has a seven year half life. So if you start eating collagen, I do my 20 grams or more every day and I have for 10 years, what happens is it starts to build healthier collagen, but it takes a long time for those healthy building blocks to be taken up into your cells over time, which is, uh, which is important to understand about that. All right, number one thing you do to help stop endometriosis, stop eating fructose and probably take an antifungal and check for mold in your house. Ashley, Bulletproof and Breastfeeding, my first book was on how to have healthier babies. It's called The Better Baby Book. Yes, Bulletproof does really good things, but you probably want to limit the amount of caffeine because some of it passes through into breast milk. And pro tip for anyone breastfeeding, morning milk wakes babies up, even if you don't drink coffee, and night milk puts babies to sleep because morning milk has cortisol and night milk has melatonin. So if you're pumping and you take the morning milk and you give it to your baby at nighttime and you don't sleep all night, there, now you know why. Anna Nicole says coffee is very dehydrating. It turns out that it's not the coffee that's dehydrating. It's the toxins in the coffee. There's something called OTA, orcotoxin A, which specifically targets the kidneys and the bladder. So when you drink coffee that has mold from processing in it, then your body says, oh no, I have toxins in here. And it pulls water out of your plasma to dilute the toxin. And then it makes you have to go pee even when your bladder's not full. You ever drink some coffee and be like, I wanna, like, I feel like, uh, uh, and then you have to pee. Well, what's going on there is your body's automated systems protecting you. And if instead you were to drink coffee that was lab tested and not fermented the way normal coffee is, this is the coffee I invented that Bulletproof has. And if you drink that stuff and you don't have the same effect, no, caffeine itself is a very weak diuretic. So coffee isn't dehydrating. Toxins that affect the kidneys and, hmm, where else could you find those? Like beer? You ever notice you drink beer, you have to pee a lot? Well, it's not just the water in the beer, it's the ochratoxin A in the beer. Unfortunately, in the US, there are no standards. So coffee that's illegal to sell in China, Japan, and South America gets sent to the US, we drink it, then we feel angry, and we have to pee a lot, and it is dehydrating. So that's why I created something with, with standards that are almost 10 times stronger than European standards. That's the bulletproof stuff. All right. Simi Manish, which company is collagen? Bulletproof collagen. We make the best tasting chocolate dip collagen bars. We have collagen protein. I use our beauty collagen now because I like the taste. I do that uh, because it just tastes really good. All right, I'm smooth as butter. It's probably mostly made out of butter. All right, happy health sisters. How to reduce high cortisol and crodig. How to get rid of, it just went out. How to get rid of a fatty liver. All right, high cortisol. You want to go to bed earlier? And you want to have salt in the morning when you first wake up and look at adrenal fatigue issues like that. And fatty liver is caused by, this is going to sound amazing, alcohol, even a little bit of alcohol is not good for you. But the other thing is fructose. It is fruit. It is fruit juice. It is fructose all over the place. And less than that is caused by sugar. So if you cut out grains, you can probably have a little bit of white rice, but not much grain at all. And you get rid of the fructose, the fatty liver goes down. What else helps with fatty liver? Ketosis. What else is a good idea? MCT oil. That stuff works really well. Oh, hey, Simi's from Punjab, India. That's awesome. You guys have good food up there. All right. So, uh, Anna, you're drinking clean coffee from Ecuador, um, farm to table in 10 days, um, but you're told by Dr. Oz it's very dehydrating. So Dr. Oz is right. If your coffee has mold in it, it is dehydrating. I don't know about very, and Dr. Oz is a friend. He's been on my show. I've been on his show several times. Uh, and I, as a human being, man, that, that man is amazing. He's so smart and so high in tech. But to be on his show, he has a team of scientists who look at you uh, and look at everything you're going to say and vet everything. Like he is such a high integrity guy. And so many people use his name without his permission. It drives them nuts. Um, Dana Lee says Bulletproof Coffee is so clean for you. Guys, I actually quit drinking coffee for five years. I created Bulletproof Coffee because I miss coffee. Um, D Hotty Dotty 101, any help with long COVID symptoms? Long COVID symptoms appear to be mitochondrial. It just so happens there's a book called Headstrong. It's all about mitochondrial biology. And yeah, I, I wrote it. 
And the things that restore your mitochondria are going to do that, as well as intermittent hypoxic training, which is in that book, as well as something we do at, at uh, Upgrade Labs, not for COVID, just for general wellness. But look at that stuff, intermittent hypoxic training. You basically need to stress your mitochondria with uh, even breathing exercises could help. Uh, unfortunately, there's no such thing as vegan collagen for that question there. Um, collagen comes from animals. And the, the vegan collagen supplements are not collagen. They just put it on the label, unfortunately. Dallander, what supplements do I take? I take about 150 supplements a day because, well, I used to have you know, obesity and autoimmune problems, but I'm looking to live to 180 and I'm experimenting a lot. Energy drinks generally are bad news, uh, almost always. Mother Nature's energy drinks are, there's three of them, hot chocolate, tea, and coffee. Those are energy drinks. All right, how do you get deep sleep from Anna Food Good? I love sleep hacking. I did a sleep challenge. In fact, I'm going to do another one. If you go to daveasprey.com slash sleep challenge, I think it is, um, you can uh, probably sign up for the next one. There's a private Facebook group, thousands of people benefiting from this. But deep sleep, the number one thing is, what's going to happen with me? These guys. This is from a company called True Dark. I founded this, this company. I wrote the patents. I know this cold. I doubled my deep sleep with true dark glasses. They're not blue blocking. They block four colors of light, not just one. You wear these for an hour before bed and watch your deep sleep score go crazy on your aura ring. This is a really, really cool thing. It's, it's amazing. How often do I do intermittent fasting? You know, if you guys really want to know about fasting, go to fastthisway.com and pre-order my fasting book. It comes out in January. I am super on this book. Uh, and it turns out intermittent fasting three days a week, four days a week, especially if you have metabolic problems, if you're going through perimenopause or a lot of stress is probably all you need. And doing it every day can be too stressful, especially when you start. But fasting isn't supposed to make it you feel like you want to punch people or like you're going to die. I tell you how to fast without pain and how to change your mind around fasting. So this is a book that is, it actually tells the story of me fasting in a cave. My first four day fast was all alone in the desert in a cave. Uh, led by a shaman that wasn't even there. And so I, I walk you through all the details. Fastthisway.com. Pre-order. If you love these live streams and all, you can support my work as an author. Pre-orders matter so much because the publisher then knows what to do. They know how popular it's going to be. So if you guys would do me the honor of ordering my book now, I would be really grateful. All right. Let's see. Green tea, even though it's loaded with fluoride. Uh, from Anna Nichols. It turns out loaded with fluoride. There is fluoride present in it, but you can also take iodine, which is going to make that uh, uh, reasonable. My bigger concern with green tea is actually that it blocks folic acid, especially in pregnant women. So if you drink a lot of green tea, you should be taking folinic acid, not folic acid, uh, because you need the methylated form of, of uh, folic acid. All right. How to lower high LDL from Dina. Dina, don't lower high LDL unless you have evidence that it's causing harm to you. And the evidence that you have harm, these are core bulletproof lab tests that I've been recommending for 10 years. If there is damage to your arteries, something called LPPLA2, somebody type that into the comments room, we can see it. LP as in like Larry, Peter, dash, Peter, Larry, A for Apple, whatever, two. LPPLA2 is an enzyme that's released when there's damage to the lining of your arteries. If your LDL is as bad as they say it is, the enzyme has to go up. If it's not up, what's going on here? Your LDL actually makes you live longer. Did you know that? People with higher LDL actually live longer and they're more resistant to toxins. Healing Eats, what's the first book of mine that you should read? Well, if you wanna live a long time, that's what Superhuman's about. If you wanna know what to do with your life, that's Game Changers. If you want to make your brain work, that's headstrong. If you want to know what to eat to feel good all the time and not have excess weight, that's the bulletproof diet. So it depends on your goal. Uh, where do you buy those glasses from? Oh, the glasses are available at shop. Oh, let's see. These are at truedark.com. Just truedark.com. And if someone can type that in there for me, I'd appreciate it. These glasses have changed my life. Literally, I sleep and I don't get jet lag anywhere. Oh, thanks, Chili. Chili says I'm cute. All right, how much protein per day for women? About half a gram per pound of body weight. And that's for anti-aging. If you're exercising a lot or you're over 60, it goes up to about 0.6, maybe even 0.7. Yes, my brave soul, there's a whole chapter in my new book on fasting for women. The differences on fasting for women versus men, we are not the same. 
And I know sometimes people say it's politically incorrect to say that, but look, we have different hormones, we have different wiring, we have different organs, and it's really important to acknowledge what's happening um, there because fasting and even ketosis is different for women. Question from, um, from MN Style, what's my take on lectins? If you go back to 2011, when I launched the Bulletproof Diet, the Bulletproof Diet popularized intermittent fasting, modern keto, uh, and it was in chapter one, there's four toxins that mother nature makes that are affecting you every day that you don't know about. One of them is lectins, one of them is oxalates, that raw spinach and kale thing I talked about. One of them is mold toxins or mycotoxins. Another one is called phytates. If you like plant-based protein, plant-based protein is loaded with phytates. And for every gram of plant-based protein with phytate, you need another gram of animal-based protein to overcome the phytate. So what's going on here, this is why animal-based grass-fed protein, even if it's eggs, that's okay, right? That's gonna work very, very well. And so those four toxins, lectins, but here's the thing about lectins. Your body makes a thousand lectins inside it every single day. A lectin is just a protein that sticks to a sugar. But genetically, you have different receptors. So there are some people like me, the nightshade family, potatoes, tomatoes, peppers, eggplants. My entire life, I was in pain. I had arthritis diagnosed in my knees when I was 14. My back hurt all the time. I just thought it was supposed to hurt all the time. So what do you do when your back hurts? You eat cayenne pepper, which is a nightshade. When I finally untangled all this stuff, that's why it's in the first chapter of the Bulletproof Diet. These are so-called suspect foods. And when you go down and you look at the Bulletproof Diet, you find, oh wait, these foods are really good for some people and they're really bad for other people. Lectins are because of that. So don't let anyone tell you all lectins are bad. Uh, for instance, cashews, which I use in my bars, people tolerate them really well compared to almonds, believe it or not. Oh, I love this one. Why would you feel hungry after eating an apple from Leo's Food Picks? Guys, apples make you hungry, especially when they're raw and eat them by themselves. It's just a fact. And one time I found the name of the chemical in them and I can't find that study anymore and it's been driving me nuts. So I will tell you that there's definitely a a problem there um, where you eat an apple, it's gonna do that. But if you eat it with a ton of almond butter or cheese, magically it doesn't do that. All right, um, cavern, carnivore cavern kitchen, does xylitol break fasting? Probably not, that's a tough one. I can tell you that if you're doing a little bit of butter and some MCT oil in your coffee, that does not break a fast unless you're doing a gut rest fast, in which case anything other than pretty much water is gonna, is gonna do that. But I think that you would have, um, um, you're not gonna have the blood sugar issues, at least most people don't from xylitol, but whether it does anything else in there, I don't really know. So I would say probably don't do that. Um, Taka, the bulletproof uh, collagen does not affect muscle, question mark? No, it does. It counts your total protein. It's not considered a complete protein because it's low on the amino acids you're getting too many of. So there's cysteine and methionine. And when you get lots of those, it increases something called mTOR, that, puts muscles on, right? And that's pretty cool, it puts muscles on. There's just one little problem there. If you're chronically in growth mode, it increases your cancer risk and you're actually not gonna live as long. That's why a lot of bodybuilders um, don't make it as late in life as they could. So what's going on there? Well, it turns out you do want those proteins, but collagen lets you up your protein levels without getting even more of those inflammatory amino acids, which is pretty cool. All right. And uh, let's see. And by the way, guys, like I, I eat the way I talk about, like I said, I'm like 48 and I feel like I'm doing okay. I probably work out less than you, but like there are guys way more muscular. The New York Times says I'm almost muscular. I'm a dad, I'm a CEO. Um, and I'm very happy with just how I am, who I am, and the amount of time and energy that I spend on exercise. I'm strong, I'm flexible, put my ankle behind my head. You can do it in very little time when you do it right. Uh, ooh, Dr. Luca, what supplements to reduce antidepressant side effects or to potentiate uh, efficacy? That's a really cool question. I'm not going to be able to tell you unless I would know which of the antidepressants we're talking about. And then you look at the detox pathways, and they're usually cytochrome P450 in the liver. Generally, glutathione is going to take it out more quickly, which is pretty cool, and calcium deglucurate. And if you guys don't know what I just said, if someone who knows what I'm talking about can look at can just type those for me. It's calcium-D-glucarate, G-L-U-C-A-R-A-T-E, uh, and glutathione. And Bulletproof makes a glutathione that's really good. I formulated it myself. 
G-L-U-T-A-T-H-I-O-N-E. So those are the two things that help your liver bring almost anything out. But if you're on medication, they can actually remove the medication more quickly. Um, which is worse, cocaine or a bag of fries? Um, it depends what you cut the cocaine with, apparently. I can tell you that smoking a cigarette is better for you than eating a bag of fries. Uh, and MNL or MNI style, a vegan diet is not good for you. You can do well on a vegetarian diet, but full on vegan makes people sick all the time. And I was a vegan for a long time. Monk fruit is good for you. Me here. Sorry to say this. Let's see. Slow metabolizer. Ah, it's jumping around a bunch. Is the keto diet for women healthy from Adele? Yes and no. So if you do what I've been recommending forever, which is a keto diet where you go into ketosis, go out of ketosis, go in, go out, and you have to eat the right fats. You can do ketosis on corn oil and artificial sweetener, and that'll make you sick. <coughs> Talking, a lot. <coughs> Talking a lot dries your vocal cords out. So, all right, uh, what's up, um, Bad Badinos? It's hard to say some of your names here. Um, you're saying is organic coffee better or is that full of toxins as well? It turns out that organic coffee grows mold when it's sitting there in vats of river water for two days, the same as non-organic coffee. The bulletproof coffee beans are really interesting because what I do with those is, uh, I don't allow fermentation whatsoever, but they're Fair Trade Alliance coffee beans, or is it Rainforest Alliance? Shoot, they're one of the two. Whoa, Rainforest, Fair Trade. They're Rainforest Alliance, as far as I'm remembering. Yep. So, um, and I went through this, this is like seven, eight years ago now. And when you buy organic coffee, about a dollar of that, of, of the, the bag of coffee, not the dollar you pay, but the dollar that a purchaser pays before it's roasted and all that, goes to the organic certification authorities. What that means is that small farmers, the kind I support, they cannot afford to become organic certified. It takes all their money. So only large conglomerates do it. So if, what you want is small, unsprayed coffee, whether or not it's certified organic. But if it's certified organic, it's probably run by a large conglomerate. And if it's, you know, picked by a guy whose picture is on the bag or it's something like what I'm producing, um, then you actually know, oh, that land has never been sprayed and they don't use chemical fertilizers. Um, the new book is called Fast This Way. And if you go to fastthisway.com, you're going to be able to pick up an advanced copy of that. And if you do save it there's all kinds of cool stuff including a whole fasting challenge i'm going to give you access to all that when you support me by um, by purchasing a book so buy it now if you would i will actually see the results today and i appreciate it and if you heard about the conference earlier on this thing the conference is october 10th all day long very affordable just direct message the word conference to me and i will send you a link and the link is going to be uh, just hey here's where you go to get everything about the conference mark hyman is going to be on there and you're going to have uh, Maria Shriver, uh, Jay Shetty, and a bunch of people, both the personal development side, the meditation, breathing, what to eat, biochemistry, anti-aging, all together in areas where you can actually connect with other people who are in the audience. So just because it's online doesn't mean it's a set of boring lectures. We actually reproduce the Beverly Hilton, which is where we hold the, the in-person conference that we had to cancel this year. And it's there digitally online. So you can actually wander around a virtual Beverly Hilton. So this isn't just a bunch of Zoom things. No way. It's going to be really cool. Just DM the word conference to me. Uh, the Wellness Babe. Ozone or NAD for mold toxicity? Ozone, 100%. But NAD is also good. What am I eating for dinner tonight? Probably some lamb from our own farm and some vegetables. Um, oh, I love this question. No one's ever asked me that. What is the best body fat percentage to be healthiest for men and women? Well, for men, the bottom range is 10 and you can be up to about 16, 17 uh, and you can be healthy. For women, it's probably about 15 up to about 25. And a lot of that for women, it depends on hips and breasts. And if you have not had children yet and you've been eating enough fish or you've been taking your omega-3 supplements a lot of that stuff on on the hips thighs and you know the junk in the trunk that's so attractive that's actually where your body is storing omega-3 dha and epa it's going to give all of that to the first baby which is why first babies have a little bit more of an intelligence boost so if you are the firstborn you can tell your siblings right now that dave says that you're smarter this is how it works sorry guys it's it's math all right i am loving this conversation 
but I am invited to be on another call, this one on another podcast that's getting pre-recorded. So I'm going to wish you guys very well. And uh, if you liked Mark Hyman, what he had to say, you like what I'm talking about, you're going to get a lot more along with thousands of other people in the community when you go to the conference. It's the best thing you could possibly do. And just DM the word conference. I'll send you the link. Sign up right now. There's a limited number of spots because of the technology we're using. Uh, so do it now. And especially for VIPs, those are almost sold out. And I'm really hoping to see you there. And if not, pick up Fast This Way. Just go to fastthisway.com and order the book now. It'll be the first people to get it because it always ships out. If you order it early, they ship it out to you as soon as they can. And you'll be getting a lot of cool stuff from me. So sign up and I will see you guys later. Thank you.